Good afternoon. Artificial intelligence has been developed for nearly 80 years now. And over the past few years, it's become a very useful tool in many areas. It's become that good that we can already observe AI as a, as a colleague, as, a, as someone who is doing the job, a worker. Because as a worker makes mistakes, AI makes mistakes, it needs uh, in-service training, and sometimes we don't understand at all what's going on in their heads. The University of Tartu has trusted AI with quite complex tasks, driving cars, for example, and neural neurotranslation. With the AI, we have to review the translation, though. Uh, we have to edit uh, the text if necessary. And for the cars, there has to be a safety driver able to stop or take over uh, driving if necessary at one point. The AI is good at driving cars, but the safety driver still has to be there. We have had in the world tests of um, uh, self-driving cars without a -dri safety driver, but it's not completely trustworthy. For example, a couple of years ago it was uh, spotted that Tesla car misreads this sign uh, and uh, interprets 35 to be 85, and uh, that would mean accelerating and a potential crash, obviously. So what happened was that someone had added this black tape uh, strip on the three, and the AI read it as 85 instead of 35. It's just one example of many, and this mistake was corrected, but it very nicely illustrates the trustworthiness of artificial intelligence. And this is something that many researchers and scientists work on at the University of Tartu. So we want the AI to make less mistakes. And there are specific um, application areas that need that, whether it's translation engines or self-driving cars. Uh, uh, Professor Mark Fischel, for example, in uh, linguistics technologies, they focus on reducing the mistakes in translations. However, the mistakes are still there even uh, when we try to reduce them. And this is why it's very important for the AI to be able to be uncertain. And this is um, one of the key things that I and my team work with. We want that the self-driving car uh, would have a vision system that would be able to say that due to fog I cannot see properly and I need to slow down. What's also important is that the decisions that the AI takes would be reasoned. Let's say an AI is consulting a doctor based on an X-ray image. Then the doctor would have to understand why, what is the reason that the AI should be trusted. And Raul uh, Vicente Safra, for example, they have a project or a line of work called Trust AI. So they work with models that are used in the energy sector or in healthcare, but also in retail. Here, I have a little test for you. I give you 10 seconds to decide which of these texts were written by a human person versus an AI. And I can already tell you that the left-hand side uh, is neurotranslated. And the uh, translation engine was developed by the University of Tartu. And uh, you can see that 
Um, every, everything was translated by the, the blue was translated by uh, AI. And sorry, I messed up with the slides a little bit. They don't, they move as they want. I cannot tell them what to do for some reason. Uh, let me get back to the right slide in a second, I hope. Okay, so neurotolke.ee translated that, but uh, the Estonian word lühikokkuvõtta, I had to do myself because the translation uh, engine suggested abstract, uh, uh, which would have been wrong in Estonia. But actually, a computer also generated the text on the right hand side. The only thing that I gave was the title of my presentation um, and the topic of the conference, and uh, based on that, a large language model generated this text. So it's a model that has been trained on the basis of uh, large-scale texts, uh, or large language model, as the name says. And the texts are from the internet. And uh, I would almost be ready to sign my name to the right-hand side text. Not quite, but almost. So how does it work? It's based on artificial neural networks, and this is something that uh, the programmer creates. So there's a, there's a, let's say there's a brain, a blank brain. There are certain connections, but there's no knowledge whatsoever. So it's completely blank, not like a newborn baby's brain, because the newborn baby already knows how to move for example, before birth. And now, training is something that has to be done. And if you use, for example, cat and dog pictures, then the AI can differentiate between a cat and a dog. So what can the AI do today? So they can recognize whether it's a cat or a dog, for example, but they are it's not able to, to reason, something that would take time to analyze, to consider, so AI cannot do that. So by and large, we could say that the part of our thinking where we are very quick and we can reach a decision within a second, um, we can expect the AI to be able to do as well. We can train the AI, but if there's a, something that takes more time, uh, then it's not, uh, the AI is not very good at it. So Thinking Fast and Snow by Kahneman is a very good book, for example, on the same topic models. So the AI can predict our Google search, what the next word would be. Uh, the AI can predict what we would look like in about 20 years. But based on the existing information, uh, the AI is not ready to draw conclusions, to self-study. It would take a lot more time than for us or for a small child. Um, if, you, if we need to go through various uh, options, for example, uh, that would need computing power, the AI is very good at that, for example, chess. Um, a bit of a newer thing is pre-trained AI. This is something where uh, a huge corporation has spent a lot of money, more than 10 million euros, uh, just in order to train the AI so uh, that we would get a result that was, for example, the summary of my presentation or, or things like that. And then the pre-trained AI can be also used for uh, next layers, next layers of training and skills. Uh, skills and knowledge. These complex models um, allow with small uh, adjustments to be used 
um, in, in many ways. Now about the future. Artificial general intelligence, AGI, its training power and learning power should be comparable to a human person. So in other words, it would be able to do almost all, everything that a human person is able to do. Will we reach the AGI at one point? I'm convinced that the answer is yes, and uh, most of the uh, scientists agree. However, our opinions vary about when it would happen. Five years, 50 years, more than 100 years. Uh, that's what, uh, what the gaps are, what the differences of opinion are. But I would like to emphasize that I'm quite convinced that it will come suddenly, unexpectedly to us because we cannot predict that um, when it happens. And this is what makes it dangerous, in a way. Where would it happen? AGI would probably be created by a major uh, political power or a corporation, and it's definitely not and it is a threat if, uh, if it falls into the wrong hands. So what could we do in Estonia? What should we bear in mind? AGI would probably not be created in Estonia first, but we have to keep track. We have to be able to follow what's going on in the, in, in the AI world and scene, and we have to be able to um, take advantage or use these developments in the public sector, in defense, everywhere. What do we need for that? We need high quality education and research. And by good education, I mean good education at all levels. And also in terms of re research and science, we need it in applied sciences, but also on a wider scale, the IT and all other avenues of science, because all knowledge is important when we talk about AI. And if we want to be able to achieve something at top level in Estonia in AI, then uh, masters and PhD studies are very important. Businesses, enterprises have to be very smart and they have to be able to get good advice. So what we need is a good support system uh, that brings together scientists. And we have a very good initiative here. It's called AIRE. It's the AI and Robotics Estonia. A uh, network that offers uh, SMEs such services. The clients mostly are SMEs. So, to sum up, AI is not a simple tool. It's, it's a worker that we can but should not always uh, trust. We have to do a lot of work in order to make AI even more trustworthy. And for Estonia, it's important to understand the progress made in AI and also to take advantages of it in all sectors. Thank you. Thank you. Melis, question from the audience. How likely is it someone would hack into essential uh, service that is related to the AI. When we talk about AI, then, um, then we can think of it as a human person almost, but only when we already have the AGI, the general uh, intelligence, uh, artificial general intelligence, because then these characteristics would perhaps be present in AI as well as in human beings. So we cannot presume that AI would not hack into anything. And a lot of research has to be done there, not only in the AI and by the researchers who are developing AI, but also on a, on a wider scale, those who work with uh, defense security. What are your thoughts when you follow these discussions about AI and ethics? 
tugevates kommitsates me tegelikult peaksime neid õppivaid how stringent a control should we have over these machines the ai should we rather be careful than regretful or should we keep it as open as possible so that the technology could flourish in any possible direction? Well, many scientists already have to consider the ethics uh, issues. But this is not the nearest future. The first problems to tackle uh, concern the narrow AI, AI that is developed for one particular application and how to how to use it to the maximum and and what the risks are so this is uh, the most important thing now thank you and a round of applause